Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. You know, you can't make good choices without God's presence. Because <laughs> if it ain't God's presence, it's something else. Hallelujah. Would you turn to Psalm 103 for a moment? Everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it together, the first verse. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul. That means all your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination, and all your strength. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. That means worship with all your heart. Go after him. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Let me share something with you. Without the presence of God, you forget his benefits. That's why it's so important to be refreshed. We must be refreshed. That's why the word says renew your mind. That means refresh your thoughts. Without refresh, there's reflesh. Amen? And then the boundaries aren't reset again. Do, in other words, forget not his benefits. These are the promises of God. This is called reality. What does it say? Who forgives all your iniquities when you do what? Seek him with all your heart. Who heals all of your diseases. I don't care what the doctor says. I care what Jesus says. Who redeems you from a life of destruction. Well, praise God. I'm a witness of that. And who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies every day who satisfies your mouth with good things and so that your youth is renewed, refreshed like the eagles. This is a benefit and a promise from the Lord. This is called reality. Reality. Well, there's something opposite of reality. It's called false reality. And this is where many people fall into false reality. The Lord warned us about in the latter days that much false reality to many people in fact, people would fall out of the true reality into false reality. In John chapter 10, forget his benefits. They would lose sight of what he's done for him, them already. In John chapter 10, <clears throat> False reality. You know, I was pretty well. I was had a discussion with the Lord, and I was having a discussion in the area of how things are a mess, how the world is a stinking mess. So much deception, so much murder, so much killing, so much hatred. And, I, and, I, and I, I wanted to be able to reach more people. How can we reach more souls? What's wrong? What's happening? Why isn't a body in unity? And one of the things is because so much false reality. And he said, I sent you into this mess. See, you and I were rescued to be resent into the mess. We were pulled from the mess and then sent back into the mess to clean it up. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to clean this mess up. But first, we need to get cleaned up so we can clean the mess up. In John 10 and verse 7, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, and if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief, who is the devil, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life 
and that they may have it more abundantly. Life abundantly. That's what he came to bring me and you. He came to bring me and you not only life and abundantly, but to release his benefits to us. See, when it says that the thief comes to steal, what he steals is your will to do his will. What he kills is he kills your purpose that's been renewed now. And what he destroys is your life destiny. So he first comes to steal your will. If he can grab hold of your will and put it in captivity, you cannot do the will of God. Once he grabs hold of your will and puts it in captivity, then he begins to kill your purpose. Why he rescued you. And then the enemy begins to destroy your life destiny, what you've been predestined for. Why? He does this by creating, and this is the only thing the devil can create, is a false, is a false, identity, or a false reality. That's his whole job, is to create a false reality. And he does it through thoughts. He uses technology. He uses media. He uses education. He uses all kinds of things. He uses drugs. He uses pornography. All of these things promote a false reality. That's his job, and he does it very well. In James chapter 1, In verse 12. James 1 and verse 12. Everyone say blessed. Amen. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Cursed. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. In other words, he overcomes it. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by the devil or evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his what? His own desires and enticed. His own desires and enticed. Now, grab hold of something important before we go to the next verse. Every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence. So every thought that you get has a voice somewhere. And every voice is attached to a presence. Every presence of evil, even a presence well, of God, will release something very important. The presence of evil will release an imagination, an emotion, and a desire that's ungodly. Is everybody with me? Every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence. And every presence releases something because it's always bringing something. That's what sin is. Sin is the presence of evil. So we know that sin is the presence of evil. That means a demonic spirit has come into your presence and is trying to release something to entice you or to release something to you for a desire. Again, it releases an em emotion, an imagination, and a desire. When it's God's presence, it releases peace, joy, and righteousness. But the desires that he releases are more desire for him or godly. It's not a desire for evil or selfish or fleshly needs. So when we are drawn away or by desire or enticed, it's because the presence of evil has come. And he speaks. They speak to you. And you hear them through your thoughts. And every thought has a voice. And every voice has a presence. And every presence releases an emotion, imagination, and a desire. Is everybody with me? Okay, let's go to the next verse. Verse 15. It says, then when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to what? Sin, because it's agreed. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Brings forth what? 
death. That's pretty wild. So we are drawn away by desire or enticed because of the presence of evil. What this is saying, that every thought is a voice, every voice has a presence, which releases emotion, imagination, and a desire. In this, we are agreeing with it. When you agree with it, you eat it. And what you eat is what you become. Has everybody got it? When you agree with it, you eat it. That's why there's the knowledge of good and evil. And then there's the knowledge of or the tree of life. So there's two trees. One produces death, one produces life. What you're eating from will produce either life or death, one or the other. And Genesis chapter 3. Now, I want you to know that the presence of evil will always promote a false reality. Always. Through emotion, through imagination, and through desire. Genesis 3. In verse 1. Genesis 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, the serpent said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now I want you to know that they were in a reality which was true. The garden was a true reality. It was an eternal place God had placed. Adam and Eve were created eternal beings. But the serpent knew that if he can promote a false reality, he could change the course of everything in this goal of this world and rule it by a false reality. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Die. Touch it means eat because you're agreeing with it. Has everybody got it? You agree with it. When you agree with something in your thoughts, you eat it. Amen. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. So he called God a liar. What was she, he producing? A false reality. Trying to bring deception and delusion through a lie. Anybody ever lied to you? And you believed them? Did it bring a, a false reality of that arena? Yes. For God knows in that day you will eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God. Well, they are already like God. <laughs> so what he was trying to do is pull them out of a true reality and place them in a false reality so he could control them, knowing good and evil. To eat is to agree. By eating from the tree of life was to maintain life in the garden, in the true reality. It was a life of true reality. The serpent enticed a false reality, and they ate. And it moved them out of an eternal position into a temporary position in a place of survival in a false reality, which we call now the matrix. In 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. If you've ever seen the movie The Matrix, it's all about a false reality and a true reality. But even in the false reality, people were eating and indulging and could taste it. If you've ever had a dream or you were eating something and you could taste it, or you were fearful, or you might have hurt yourself, or whatever, you can wake up in that condition. Because to you, it was a reality, even though it was a false reality. In 1 John chapter 2. Like maybe you were falling off a building, and before you hit the ground, you woke up. 
thank God. <laughs> or you're walking across the street and the car was about to hit you and you woke up. Whoa. Or you had some nightmare and you're about to get busted again and you woke up before they came in. Praise God. <laughs> I won't go any further than that. <laughs> First John chapter 2 and verse 15. Do not love the world, right? Or the things in the world. Why? Because it's a false reality. If anyone loves the world, and the love, of the, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Why? Because that's what produces this false reality. These are desires, aren't they? And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So you must do the will of God to abide forever. You must do the will of God to abide forever. Remember, the devil comes to kill to steal your what? Your will. To kill your purpose and destroy your life destiny. That's what he comes to do. So what he wants to do is take your will in captivity, and if he can keep it in captivity in a false reality, he can control you. You can believe that lie. In verse 18, it says, listen, look at this. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming... Even now many antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Why? Because they entered, they knew they were living out of a true reality and stepped back into a false reality. It only takes one choice one wrong decision to set you back again that's all it takes he says here but you have an anointing from the holy one and you know all things so you must maintain that anointing you must maintain that presence again the enemy creates a false reality and, and he does this by causing individuals to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which fuels deception and delusion. And how does he do that? With lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And what it does is it prevents an individual from eating of the tree of life. You know, the word says something powerful. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. So if you're eating of the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the devil will take over. Has everybody got it? If you are eating of the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the devil will take over. Go to verse 18. Oh, we already did. <laughs> Again, so what's happened is somebody was maybe eating of the tree of life and then they began to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil by agreement, and they began to drift. And it takes them out of true reality into a false reality. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. In verse 1, let's speak it together. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. So what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. So if you preach the word, are you eating it? Amen. Sometimes you just need to preach yourself in the mirror. Preach to your dog. I don't care. Preach to your car. <laughs> Hallelujah. Walk around the house and preach. Preach to your bird. Preach the word. 
Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Why? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will not endure sound doctrine, which keeps them in a state of reality. True reality. But according to their own desires, here we go again, those desires. Why? How did it start? It started with a thought that was backed by a voice, that was backed by a presence, which released an emotion, an imagination, and a desire, and they agreed with it. They ate it. And it began to pull them and drift them right out of the true reality into a false reality. Because they had itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers that will agree. And they will turn their ears away from the what? Truth and be turned aside to fables, worldly lies. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your calling or your ministry. Again, many will turn from the truth and agree or eat with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, stepping out of reality into false reality in the realm of lust and pride and selfishness. That's where we got selfie. That's why, because it's a selfie generation. It's producing a false reality. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2, please. In verse 9. Oh, hallelujah. Let's speak it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. In other words, eyes to see. They have not have eyes to see reality, to see things all the way through. Living in a false reality. See, you and I must see through false reality we live in a true reality, but we're surrounded by a false reality, so it's our responsibility to see through the false reality. Does everybody understand that? And it says, verse 10, but God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. So without the Holy Spirit, you're going to stay snagged in a false reality. In fact, you won't even interpret the word of God correctly. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for what? The Spirit of God. So he's the one who will release things. He will reveal things to you. So it's important that we get an understanding. He says, eyes to see reality. Ears to, ears to hear. <laughs> Only the true reality is what we want. But many cannot see, many cannot hear because they've been caught up, their, so their will has been taken captive and they're caught up in a false reality and it's all about self. Only this can be brought by the Holy Spirit or people fall into a false reality until a rescue or death. Until a what? Rescue or death. Yeah. Go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. That is such a battle right now. I can't tell you how many believers I've spoken to that proclaim to be believers that are living in a false reality. It grieves me tremendously. Many don't, don't even know the feast of the Lord. They have no idea about visitations of God or events or things that are even happening. They're so caught up in the world, they have no idea what's going on. And you know what's going to happen? When that feast event happens, they're going to be left behind and go, what happened? Why did God desert me? He didn't. You deserted him. <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 4. In verse 1. Now the Spirit, what? Expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Amen. That some will depart from the faith. Why? taking heed to, doctrine, to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In other words, they're going to be just like what you said, itchy ears. 
They're going to be reading false doctrines, false religions that are promoting a false reality. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So he's saying those who believe and know the truth are going to be deceived, step out of the true reality into a false reality, and their wills be taken captive. He's warning us. Amen? But one of the things that happens is the enemy begins to promote false expectations. In this false expectations, people get very discouraged when that expectation doesn't get fulfilled because it wasn't from God anyways. And then they blame God. And then the enemy attacks them, brings oppression on them. Next thing you know, they're slowly drifting. Why? Because now they're eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and not the tree of life. And they go right back in the same cycle. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Is everybody okay? Man, you turn on the news, it's all a lie. It's incredible. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Would you read it please? Therefore we, we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed or refreshed. If it's being renewed or it's being refreshed day by day, if it's not being refreshed, it's not moving forward. It must be refreshed. Or it's the same thing if you don't take a shower for a day, it stink. Amen. Verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us our far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, why? Because they are temporary. It's actually false reality. But at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. See, that means seeing with carnal eyes is temporary. It's a false reality. We must see through false reality and the true reality with the eyes of Christ. That is his greatest desire is that we see what he sees. Isaiah 66. <clears throat> you know, there's... Not only a lot of deception and delusion and the word tells us in, a, in the beginning of sorrows that there would be nation against nation, ethnic groups against ethnic group, bigotry, hatred. All of those are false realities. All of that. In verse 3, would you go there with me? 3 and 4. He who kills a bull as if he slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering as if he offers swine's blood. He who burns incense as if he blesses an idol. Just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their what? Delusions. And bring their fears on them, because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that which I do not delight. Delusions of fear into a false reality. How many of y'all know fear is a false reality? Of course, there is a good fear, you know, which is a reality. You see a car come and get out of the way. You might have a little fear, you know. <clears throat> but fear brings people, when people have fallen to fear and torment, they make bad decisions because they're allowing their emotions to make decisions instead of truth. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2.
You know, many times people enter this false reality and don't even know they're in it until everything is crumbling. And they realize, what's happened? What's wrong? I don't understand this. Because it took one agreement, they ate it, and it just began to increase more and more and more. Even though they're trying to eat from the tree of life, but they're still eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you cannot serve two masters. He said, you cannot. That means the enemy will take over. In verse 5, <clears throat> is everybody there? Let's speak it. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying, lying, I said lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception, unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Why? Because all of this brought them into a false reality. They were lied to. He's known as the father of lies. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which we were taught, whether by word or epistle. Oh, hallelujah. Strong delusion, which is false reality. Again, there's more drug abuse. People are dying left and right. Bringing them into a false reality. Waking up in hell. Overdose wakes up in hell. Narcotics, pornography, all the technology, all puts a, play, a person in a place of false reality with false hopes and dreams and visions and desires. Again, religion, education, certain movies, all the things that they have right now, all of these false realities, trying to create another reality. You can't create another reality. There's only a false reality or a true reality. That's it. It's either God from the creator or the devil from the deceiver, one or the other. In 2 Peter chapter 2. It says, but these like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption. And will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. There are spots and blemishes carousing in their own what? Deception or false reality. While they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetousness practices and are accursed children. This false reality will bring on a curse in an individual because they are accepting things from the enemy. Remember, they are now eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which promotes death. Death cannot come without a curse. Has everybody got it? They're carousing in their own deceptive false reality. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. In verse 3, it says, If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent with wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is what? Proud. Proud. 
Okay, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. He is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words for which come envy, strife, reveling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourself. Wow. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain, for we, ought, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drawn men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money, the love of money, the love of money is a false reality. Is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O oh man or woman of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, laying hold of eternal life, for which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I mean, if you really look at everything, everything is promoting to become rich. They're promoting the love of money. Things that are on TV promoting the love of money. There's nothing wrong with having money, but the love of money will cause problems for you because then you'll end, up the, you'll end up serving money instead of money serving you. Oh, glory. 2 Corinthians 3. False realities. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse twelve. Let's speak it, please. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds, their thoughts were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. That veil is a deceptive veil. It's a blindness. Nevertheless, when one what? Turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Wow. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. So when someone turns, in other words, he's saying you first must turn away from the world before you can turn all the way to the Lord. So you turn away from the world, you turn to the Spirit of holy truth, and the blinders begin the process of coming off. It is not always instant. It's a process of coming off. So people they think that just because they've come back to the Lord, everything's going to be, no, there's that process now. It's the process where the blinders are coming off. But when you're turning to the Lord, it means you're turning to him with your whole heart. You are now walking away from the world again, and you're turning to the Lord with everything you have. And again, he says, it is the spirit of the Lord. That means you want to be filled, you want to be dressed, you want to be possessed by the spirit of the living God. Amen? In 1 Samuel chapter 16 for a moment. Hallelujah. Now Samuel was sent to go anoint the future king. And so these gentlemen were before him and they were David's brothers. And Samuel had the anointing oil. And in verse 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, 
because I have refused this person. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the what? The heart. The heart, the true area. Whether there is truth or the, whether there is deception. Whether the person is walking in false reality or true reality. One of the things God wants us to do is see the way he sees. It is his greatest desire that we see what he sees. In 1 Corinthians 13. So without the Holy Spirit, the, the word says that the, he is known as the spirit of truth. He guides you into all truth and he'll tell you things to come. Without fellowship with him, you won't be guided into all truth. You'll be misled. And you'll be misled into a false reality because you'll begin to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil while you're trying to eat of the tree of life. And you will lose the battle. 1 Corinthians 13, in verse 11, let's speak it. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. But then I shall know just as I am known. So what he's saying, he see a reflection dimly through false reality. But it, it, there, it will come that true reality will allow you to truly see who you are. Because even though the end result will be the true reality will take over everything and you will be as he is. Amen? And false reality will be all eaten up. You know, the word says in John 14, 6, and I'm not going to go there, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Again, everything revolves around the tabernacle and the seven feasts of the Lord. And the outer court, I want you to look at something, because the outer court is known as the way, the holy place is known as the truth, and the most holy place is known as life. So there are three chambers to the tabernacle. You go through those three chambers of the tabernacle to go home. It's called eternal port. Now, there are many people who are living in, outer, in the outer court, which is a dangerous place. If I'm living in the outer court, if I look to my right, then I see the holy, holy place. But if I look to my left, I see outer darkness. Everybody got it? If I look to my right, I see the holy place. If I look to the left, I see outer darkness. In other words, I'm going to make a choice of either way. If I live in the holy place, if I turn to the left, I see the outer court. If I turn to the right, I see the most holy place. But if my desire is to live in the most holy place, when I turn to the left, I see the holy place. And when I turn to the right, I see eternity. There's a difference. People who live in the outer court are in a dangerous position. Very, very dangerous because it only takes one choice to fall into outer darkness again. And that's where that deception is, that lie, which is nothing but from darkness, once saved, always saved. It's a stinking lie. People think they can go around and sin and do whatever they want and go to heaven. You ain't getting in there. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because who you serve when you die is where you go. Either angels come and get you or the demons come and get you, one or the other. Let no one ever tell you anything else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when I'm looking, okay, so if I'm in the outer court and I'm looking in the outer darkness, is that false reality? Yes. <laughs> you betcha. So I'm looking at false reality or I'm looking at true reality. But I'd rather live in a place where I see true reality on both sides. Amen? That's where you want to live. Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to close at 1 James chapter 1. I mean James chapter 1. 
The only James. There must be another James coming up. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't, don't write me and tell me you found second James. <laughs> it's false reality. James 1, 21. Let's speak it. James 1, 21. Therefore, do what? Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Was the planted word the tree of life? Amen. But be doers of the word, not just hearers. Deceiving yourself. Well, there's many people who can quote scriptures but can't live them. That's called false reality. It's called religious. That's a religious spirit. It's full of pride. It's full of arrogance and fear. It always reacts. It doesn't respond. It's a reactor. Because it lives in a false reality. Its will is still taken captive. Verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. Listen, the natural arena is called false reality. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of the liberty which where the spirit is and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does if anyone among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart this one's religion is useless pure and undefiled religion before God and the father is this to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world because it will create a false reality. Amen? We must be careful. We must be careful because this is what's happening. It's the big agenda right now of the enemy is to constantly keep people in a false reality or take people out of reality and create a false reality and take them captive. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect the word that's been empowered in us so that we constantly eat from the tree of life. And let the seed grow and bear fruit for your glory. Let it possess every part of our being. And bring to remembrance, quicken us by the Holy Spirit of your word that was spoken so that we eat of the tree of life and maintain reality's own. The place where you are and not where the enemy is in the false reality. Now, Lord, I ask for your blessing on your people tonight. I ask that your face shine upon them, your countenance uplift them, that you'll bring complete healing to their bodies, that you'll convert their souls and bring healing and deliverance and freedom to each and every one and prosper them according to your will as they thirst and hunger for your righteousness in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Stay blessed and dressed with the presence of God.